Catan teams have really had some interesting play style that's been coming out onto it. I reckon this could be a bit of a banger. Ooh, straight off the bat, though, Capital, he's been thrown out of the competition. Big button coming in on the Capital. Again, it's one that we don't see too often, but it's not a surprise when we do see it, um, simply on the basis that Capito is extremely strong. Very versatile operator. Three speed, which surprises a lot of people. A lot of people forget about that factor for him for some reason. There's just a feel about him that he's not going to be that quick, but he certainly is. He's also got that smoke base utility along with the asphyxiating flame arrows, and he really does have a lot of strings to his bow. So, Capito, he goes by the wayside and will be joined by Thatcher, which is pretty much a stalwart Latam band these days. Maestro, a little bit of an unusual one. We don't see too many Maestro bands, Jackie, and we don't see too much Maestro play, really. But Clubhouse is one of the locations, if you're going to see Maestro these days, it tends to be up on that garage catwalk for CCTV. We've seen that a lot of times so far. All right, yeah, no, you know what? I think this has probably had some of the the lesser expected bands out of what we've had through the season so far, right? This is, if if my mind serves me correctly, Tim, the second time I think we've seen Capital banned out over the course of stage two so far. I know your stats will probably be able to, to either prove me wrong or back me up on that. The Maestro one, obviously, a little bit more of a sticky predicament. Does make sense, but it also leaves in a lot of the opportunity for you to just rock out with either, you know, your, your Jaeger or your Wamai, which can completely deny that control for Garage anyway. I, I still feel like that's the better pick to move and obviously both of them are going to be brought out on the two big gunners we were talking about, Scardina and Mighty. This sets them up early on to be able to display a lot of that fragging prowess. I'm liking it. So it does now. We've only seen one of these teams on Clubhouse so far, and that team is Santos. Furia, a little bit of an unknown quantity, especially with two new players coming in. So time will tell for those guys. But if we have a look at Santos's previous performance, they did get a loss. It was the map that Black Dragons came out and beat them on. It was it was hard fought, that much is fair to say, but it was 7-4 to Black Dragons. We had some big moments, if you remember, Jackie, particularly the, uh, I think it was round 10. It was Lagonis getting the diffuser down in a bit of an off-brand spot and Ryan in a one versus two got it back to 1v1 then ran sort of full pace towards the default plant spot scratched his head for a minute when the diffuser wasn't there <laughs> but then went and managed to get a successful challenge onto Lagonis won his one got that diffuser disabled and won a big big round for Santos so they're certainly capable here they just need to show us a little bit more on defense, to be honest, than they did against Black Dragons. That's where they really struggled, Jackie. On attack, they had moderate success, 50-50 on CCTV cash. They won Jim and Bedroom. They won one out of three Church and Arsenal, which isn't actually terrible. But on defense, they really struggled. Now, Scardinia, he's going to come out. He's not struggling on defense right now, I'll tell you that. Oh, mate, a lovely opener from, of course, the man we were trying to give some limelight to, and he deserves it. He's a bit of a showman. He can definitely pack a punch when he needs to, and coming into the game early like that with a tasty little frag is a hell of a way to do it. Now, is it going to be consistent, though? Is this par for the course in our opening round of Clubhouse, or will they be able to bite back? We've still got a lot of time on the clock, of course, as well. Two minutes and 11 seconds. Ace getting a little bit of play as well with those Selma breaching charges. Slap it on top. It will fall the whole way down and tell that hard breach wall to pieces in seconds. Very effective stuff. Fred could actually be quite effective at getting a bit of a pick back in their favor as well. Peers in through the window, Tim. Being quite cheeky, in fact. Relatively rude. Don't go looking for other people's windows, but you won't get anything for it. Well, yeah, giving the old peek through the neighbour's window, it's never going to go down well, is it? But he gets away with it this time. Now, you can see that garage door is just being watched heavily there. Very, very cautious. Now, the attack from Furia so far, not too much progress, Jackie. They've got that east wall opened up, but they're a minute and a half into the round. There's absolutely no pressure being applied over on the construction side. We can see there's a bit of droning going on, but it is not disrupting the Roma over that side of things. And Santos, they're pretty happy as they are at the minute. They've got themselves locked into their positions and they're just holding fast. Now, Fred, he's trying to apply a little bit of pressure from the half roof there, just looking to play in through the east wall onto that cash wall. But... Shots will be exchanged, none will land, and that's going to be Furia just wriggling away once again, still on full HP. Now, it looks like there's going to be a little bit of pressure from the server side window there, but again, the gridlock novice, all they can really do is get those track stingers out and just deny that movement. Now, they still have to clear out Garage Catwalk potentially here because that is a big risk. Ooh, 
Risky play, and it will be served up with punishment, but Tim, there's a bit of a mistake in the detonation. Cyprus, the man might have a field day, but one of them is going to be a team kill. In the end, it won't matter too much because we get left into this scenario, a one versus three. They've got a huge manpower advantage off the back of it, and they will still finish up the round. It was a small mistake in a sea of success. A lovely round coming up from Santos to kick us off, and actually a fairly clean one when you take it into consideration, Tim. Yeah, it really was. Uh, I don't know if that was down to them or whether it was down to Furia, if I'm honest. Uh, just calling it as I see it. I think Furia, they uh, never had anywhere near enough control to start pushing into sight. They had a man on garage catwalk still. They had men entrenched in cash. They had one at the top of red stairs. And just trying to put the track stingers and smoke canisters out and run into sight and put the diffuser down is probably leading in one direction and we just saw exactly what that direction was it was a nitro from cyprus to shut down any plant attempt he's going to take his man with him he doesn't even mind he's just putting that diffuser down cold on the ground and really if you think about that site jackie just picture it in your mind's eye for me they were trying to play within a fraction of space that is available to them essentially they were just trying to play in the small strips of cctv that run either side of the servers that's that was their entirety of control for furia there and it was just nowhere near enough you can't push in to four and five defenders like that you have to get a couple of kills realistically if you're going to push into cctv you must be in control of garage catwalk we've seen it countless times you're just going to get gunned down whether you put smokes out or not it's going to be a one-way ticket to a, to a hiding. Now, Tim, I, I don't want to derail us immediately at the start of the show, but you said mind's eye. See, now, interestingly enough, Tim, I, I have aphantasia. I can't actually visualise at all. I, I can't see anything. I, can't, I have no visual memory. Really? That's very interesting. I've never heard of that condition, Jackie, but that's, that is actually very, very fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it's the opposite of Fantasia, of course. So, um, of course. Yeah, I think, I think it's like 1 in 40. It's something like that. But yeah, I have no visual memory. It blew my mind because I remember, obviously, you know when people are like, oh, you count count sheep to go to bed. And I was like, count sheep? What does that even mean? Like, are you, are you just uh, pretending that you're counting a sheep? And they're like, no, no, we can actually see sheep. Ridiculous. Hmm, very, very interesting. I'll bear that in mind, Jackie, and I will um, I'll avoid asking you to picture anything. Yeah, thank you. I'll paint it's, a picture for you instead. It's quite offensive, actually, Tim. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit I upset. feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you've done this. You know this about me. We spoke about this off air. Oh, right then, Tim. Back on track. Yeah, we'll talk more about that later anyway. For uh, for the course of the round right now, not much has gone down. Couple of tags here and there. Mighty, he was probably out imagining sheep, and unfortunately, he's imagined a bullet, but it's done actual damage to him on the mute. Dropped him down to near about 50 HP, but he's still going to be fine for the course of the round, being able to back off and stay alive. Furia not actually getting themselves an early opening frag this time around. Nothing in the early game. Let's see if they can make up for it towards the end of the round. Gardenia looking to end lives, but he's suffering from success there. Dropped down to the ground from Lender, the buck finishing him off, and they have now got themselves a pick with a minute and 15 seconds left. A little bit of back and forth going on there between Lender and Scardinia. It was, of course, Scardinia in round one, picking up the opener onto Lender. He comes in. Anything you can do, I can, I won't say do better, but he can certainly do the same, picking up that opener onto Scardinia, giving Fury the advantage this time around. And it certainly seemed last time like they might need it because they just struggled to get the kills in the mid to late round and to get themselves over the line. Now, interestingly, Lender, he has been the best on entry so far for Fury. Furrier and Cypress, he's going to shut down Fred there with a nice little battle in the oil pit. And that's one that you might expect Fred to come away from. But mighty great Nitro toss over the wall and into the kill box. Absolutely deletes Bursa from the round. But once again, those trades continue. And we find ourselves three versus three coming into the last 23 seconds. And we are going to see the Church and Arsenal bloodbath any second. Mighty Ooh. on the shotgun, completely shut down by Lender. Just manages to keep his distance so that he's out of range. Will be closed down by a wagon this is the danger of allowing blue corridor to remain but highs with a quick trade allows novice to get in and start getting that defender diffuser down rather but it's the defender shut down by highs as he closes out the round round two going to furia i told you jackie i called it in a tweet earlier today this was a sleeper believe me this is going all the way and it's going to be hard fought Oh, it should do though both of these teams fairly evenly matched when it comes down to the head-to-head -head. they're close together 
This is one of the games that I, th I think is definitely a telling story to try and prove just how far up into the standings you should be. For Santos, will they end on top of Furia? Will Furia be able to prove that they're better than them? That's why this game has so much weight to it. But to the viewers at home, Tim, it seems like they've already made up their minds. And we've got 80% of the vote going in favor of Furia. That's 136 people believing in them. That that is that is a, a big landslide victory for Furia there in the poll. To be fair, and I'm a little bit surprised by it. I think Santos have certainly got more uh, to show us. They showed us a great performance against Black Dragons. They came away six all in the first map, only lost it over eleven rounds in the second. You know, this is a team that can play. Make no mistake about it. And I think there could be a couple of surprises coming out today. Like I say, for me, I would. And draws are always difficult to predict, but this one for me feels like it's got draw written all over it. I think Santos have got certainly more of a fight than twenty percent of the vote suggests. Oh, yeah. This game is close. Obviously, for any of our newer viewers that are joining us as well, as I think we've now gone live on both of the channels on YouTube and on Twitch, this one is set to be a tasty little matchup. If you're coming into it and you're thinking, who are these two teams? Well, you are in for a treat. Our rank 9 and 10 teams here in the BR6 that are really fighting to get themselves survivability towards the mid-portion of the season. It's our second week of competition. They've already done better than they have last season, especially for Furia. They're into a position, Tim, where they could skyrocket if they get a win. But that is a big if. The Santos are no pushovers. They've got a lot of talented players. Scardina already came out to start off the game with a nice little early frag. Mighty and Cypress are the other two that I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on on and if we glance over to the side of furia it's novice and lender the newcomers that both have really been going to new heights they kicked it off amazingly back on week one i think novice really did lead the charge he had seven frags in the space of two rounds can he try and mirror that today he needs to if furia want to pick themselves up some points tonight tim Speaking of mirroring, it's quite interesting to note, Jackie, we've got a cheeky little double mirror strategy on the bathroom wall there. Now, that's not something that we see too much of anymore. When that was first sort of conceived a couple of years ago, when it first came about, it was big brain thinking, and then it seemed to sort of die off. People got used to just exactly how to deal with it. And generally speaking, what happens is you put two mirrors next to each other, as we can see, at the minute they're both closed, but there is their option there to actually open one of those. Oh, there you go. So one gets open to prevent the wall being opened and then you play behind the second one that is still solid and essentially you can peek out of the one that's open it's actually a really simplistic method of giving yourself a nice kill hole next to an established mirror without having to open up a soft wall and leave that wall soft it's got potential but obviously they need to stop the players getting in behind them I do indeed. And so far, I mean, it's relatively worked out. This could work out even better as well as the Nitro goes casting out through the doorway. But it won't actually pick up the frag. It won't matter, though, as Heist just peeks back in anyway. Faces the mirror and he will smash his lips clean off. Dispatching him as soon as he got an opportunity to overwhelm the Maverick. Another round goes the way of Santos. Right now, relatively close. It's been a bit back and forth from the get-go. Santos definitely seeming like they are a little bit further ahead though. It doesn't seem like maybe this is a level pegging instantly. Especially with Furious starting off on the attack, Tim. This is where I would have thrown them a bone. And said they would have come out with the opening rounds. They would have been netting themselves entry. Especially uh, Novice. He would have been the one for me that I thought would have just walked out, rocked up, started living his movie, finding impact frag after impact frag. But it's not been that storyline yet. It's mostly been Santos dropping the ball in one round, but for the rest of it, just having clean sheets. Very interesting. Um, I think we've got the mute bug at the moment, so we're just going to be having a little um, re-host, I think. You'll come back to us for a second while we just have a look at getting that sorted out we'll get it done as soon as possible sorry a little bit confusing there for a second um but you have come back into us we will get back to this as soon as possible santos 2-1 ahead at the minute doing well on defense which is the big the big sort of identifier of growth for santos here jackie because they only managed to win one round on defense against black dragons so the fact that they are coming out they've got two already they've bettered that they're showing us that they're good on defense they're going to be confident coming into the attacking phase as well because they did well against black dragons so why wouldn't they be and it's interesting to see them bringing some different stuff to the table i'm you know i'm sure there's people that might raise questions over the effectiveness of a double mirror strategy like that but ultimately yeah. 
I'm I've always been a big advocate for I don't care what teams do if it gets the job done. Simple as that. You know, I'm not going to criticize and say, well, that's not part of the meta. Should they really? At the end of the day, if it gets around over the line, who cares? Nobody, when you're looking back at the history books, nobody, when you're looking back at the score lines, is worried about what strats were used in each round. You look at the score line, Santos have got the win. Simple as that. And whatever it takes to get it over the line. And it certainly did the trick. It stopped them getting the bathroom wall open. They tried to apply the Selma and it just made it very difficult in order to, to do that and push in. So they had to try and push in through the bedroom instead and they were shut down. Santos were completely ready for that being the case and closed them out of it. So great stuff from them. Well, it's one of those, isn't it? Where it's like, if it's stupid and it works, was it stupid? It's, Absolutely. You know, it, it worked for them. It was a good execution, gave them a little bit of opportunity. And as a cheeky strat to throw into the mix as well, it's one of those that you can do as a one-off. It also leaves them second guessing. It's now that bit of paranoia where they could be frustrated off the back of a play like that. That might actually creep over into the next time you match up again as well. Especially if you look at it, right? If we ever got into a position where they were in bracket play, it's one of those rounds that's just like... You remember that round on Clubhouse, boys? Do you, do you really want to risk it? Like, they've got a mirror. It's just not worth it, right? It's a little bit of a seed of doubt. And I suppose what we can as well do, Tim, whilst we just have a little bit of time whilst we're getting the lobby set back up. Obviously, for anyone that's a bit confused that was watching APAC that's now ended up here with me and Tim, hello, welcome. Me, me and Tim will look after you now. Welcome to our home. It's very loving. We love everyone here in the Latam house of love, Tim. Very welcoming, Jackie. Everyone is welcome in Latam, absolutely. And as you say, we'll take good care of you. Don't you worry. Oh, but obviously, if you do also want to continue on watching the uh, the APAC stream and you're like, hang on a minute, I, I didn't mean to be in LATAM, don't worry, still going on. That's going to be going on over on Rainbow Six Bravo. You can head on over there and catch it. We'll be, of course, mandating and taking over here on the A stream. We've, uh, we've, hi we've hijacked it, Tim. It's ours now. We have there's people coming back from getting a coffee or a water jackie and they're thinking <laughs> what what's gone on i'm where have furia come from i don't even know these teams and they don't know what's me, going just on going, who's this bold guy <laughs> De dev and geo look a bit different what's what's happened here <laughs> Oh, man. I've dropped the Australian accent and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to keep it rolling with some beautiful Brazilian siege that is going to be coming up. Of course, in terms of the game we've got going on right now as well, we're a couple of rounds in. You haven't missed much, missed much rather. I wouldn't worry about it. Stay tuned as it is set to be a fairly exciting one. It's Furia taking on Santos. Right now, there are two bottom ranked teams in the competition, Tim. I think the issue is, as much as those rankings would make you look at it and go, ah, oh, this one won't be that interesting, you know, they're, they're some of the weaker competition. I think that's a bit harsh because I, I think the competition as a whole, all of BR6 is so stacked that although they're at the bottom, there's still a lot of fight left in them. Oh, you'd be wildly wrong. There's absolutely no two ways about it. These teams have both shown so far over both players that they've been involved in that they've got some real talent. As I mentioned last time around, we've had big players out of Rise, out of Scardinia. Mighty went big all on the side of Santos, but then we look across the Furia. Novice and Lender in the first week, I think it was 45 kills between two of them across two maps. It was a ridiculous first That's opener sickening. for them. It was absolutely massive. I'll double check the figures. I'm pretty sure, and I'm not too often wrong from memory, Jackie, but I'm pretty sure that it was 45 kills in that first um, that first week. Just between, They just absolutely dominated in. So there was no two ways about it. So 12 and 13, 25, and then... 9 and 9, 18. So, to, yeah, 43 it was between oh. them. Absolutely ridiculous first that week. That is wild. Especially, like, to come in fresh into the play day as well. Basically, debut with the team. And the fact it was two new additions to the team, right? Because that's kind of what we were sat there scratching our heads about. And it's like, oh, it's going to be a bit awkward for them. It's two new players. Have they been able to find their foot in? Have they found where they want them to play? Turns out, yeah, they did. They did very quickly. And talking of quickly, we're heading back into the game. It looks like the lobby's been set back up we can continue on with clubhouse now if we tantalized you and you're thinking brah i am enamored by what is going on with of course the big man novice and the large lad of lender then get ready for it because it's going to be kicking off when we head back into it they are on the attack and this is where they popped off previously it was consulate where he went huge to start us off with entry frags i want to see that novice coming out now tim Absolutely, yeah, you're completely right. He went five and one on consulate on entry. He really can have a huge impact in the early stage of rounds. And so far, 
Out of three rounds, Lender and Novice, they've got an opening kill each. So 66% of those opening kills go into the side of Fury are on the attack and showing that they can really get an advantage in that early round. But they've got to start backing it up. That is the key now. They need to come in. They need to take that into the mid round and they need to really start pushing forward and get in sight control. That's something that we haven't really seen them do too much of yet. They managed to get into Church and Arsenal, but there was only two men left alive by the time they actually got into sight. They won a war of attrition, essentially picking up gunfights along the way. And now when we've looked at CCTV, we've just looked at gym and bedroom, never really gaining any established control in or around the site. And that's the next one for me, Jackie. If they're going to have a different outcome here, to what they did in round one when they attacked CCTV and cash. They need to be going in and they need to get control over garage primarily. That is the big thing. Get control over garage because it really did just put them on the back foot because they were trying to rush into sites in CCTV with no control. They just put down the smoke canisters and tried to run in and it just really didn't work. So that is going to be the have to be the change for them. It's got to be. It's got to be. And if you've uh, you've joined us now or you were with us for our intro spiel where we were getting you ready for the game, we're building you up, we've had another bit of a technical slip up. Don't worry. It'll get resolved. We'll get into the game. You're not going to miss absolutely anything. Of course, we're operating off the feed that comes from the Brazilian office. So if the game's live for them, it's live for us on this stream as well. There is no action that will be missed. And hopefully it shouldn't take too long to get our players back in to kick this one off. In the meantime, Tim, of course, if anyone has joined us and they do have a little bit of excitement about this game and they're thinking, I, I know a lot about Novice. I, I reckon he's going to play well tonight. Then tell us. Let us know what you're thinking about this game. It's hashtag BR6. Producer Simon will be handpicking some of the best tweets that come through and he'll be plopping them on screen for me and Tim to have a bit of a chin wag about throughout the course of the broadcast. They need to tweet Tim, didn't they? Of course they do. We love everybody at home getting involved. I think that's been one of the, the big points for us, Jackie, over stage one coming into stage two has been the level of interaction we've had from the community. And I think the community's responded well to the level of interaction they've had from us as well. It's been a lot of fun all around. Everybody's enjoyed it. So yeah, get yourself involved. Get on the old tweeter. Send us some messages and we'll, we'll have a little look over them. Yeah, if you're just sat in around near your PC, you know, get on Twitter, send in a tweet and uh, we'll have a bit of a read throughout the broadcast. Of course, we are just waiting for this one to kick off. Hopefully it take it shouldn't take too long, really, and then it'll be getting underway. In the meantime, we are subduing you to uh, just mine and Tim's faces and our general argy bargy for a little bit, but it'll be well worth it, won't it, Tim? Always is, always is, Jackie. I mean, I won't make a comment on the faces. I'll leave that for the viewers at home to decide whether they're worthwhile or not. But uh, the RG Barge is always worth sticking around for. Oh, it's certainly golden. It, it really is. See, the thing is, right, at this point, I wasn't prepared. I didn't have the riddle sheet open. I wasn't ready for us to have a rehost immediately. Not two of them back to back, Tim. It's thrown me off. I can imagine that it would do, Jackie. You see, this is it. People don't always realise how much goes into these broadcasts. You know, there's documents to be opened. You've got to look into a camera, speak. There's all sorts going on. So that's the funny thing, right? You know, like, obviously, a couple of days ago when everyone was just tweeting, like, their caster sheets, uh, Jess put hers out, Geo is getting involved. I was sat there and I was looking at mine, and it's just 70 riddles in, in block <laughs> form, one after the other. And then there's a separate tab just called Animals that just has loads of different facts. <laughs> Not a single team name in sight. I love it. <laughs> but, you know, I've, I've got to have it, Tim. That, that's why we work so well. You always bring the stats. You're always on the ball of absolutely everything. I know your master sheet contains everything that's happened in every round. Where a player sneezed, where they got a frag, it's all there. That's why I come in just with stats about warthogs and, you know, what, kookaburras. <laughs> Perfect balance, Jackie, just as all things should be. Oh, man. Well, hopefully this game will balance us out. Producer Simon's asking me if I want to live a riddle. I, if you have one, Simon, I've, I've not got my sheet up. <laughs> Hang on. You're going to have to give me a second here to prepare, prepare the riddle sheet. Let me get my Google Docs up. You get your Google Docs. I know in my spreadsheet, Jackie, there's just a tab at the bottom of it that just says meaning of life. I've not dared click on it yet, um, but that's how comprehensive the spreadsheet is at this point in time. Does it just say 42? Just, yeah, that's all that's in there. <laughs> except it's a, except it's a circular function that's actually been allowed by the sheet that comes oh. back to 42. 
Oh, right, here's the crazy thing about that. I've got I've got the riddle sheet open. We'll get into that in a minute whilst we've got some downtime anyway. Hey, do you know about uh, SCPs, Tim? Are you are you familiar with SCPs? I'm I have played a I've played a game that I believe has been born on on the SCP stuff. Yes, I think so. Because, they're, see, they're very interesting, right? Obviously, it's like collaborative stories where, yeah. where people will come up with stuff, right? But it's it's written in a style as if it's like, you, you know, like government files and like stuff's been redacted. So they'll write certain things and then remove bits. So it's all kind of, you know, it's all kind of secret and, and a bit bizarre. There's some pretty good SCPs uh, about stuff like the uh, Hitchhiker, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. There's some banging ones in there. Have to have a look through, yeah. It's um, definitely, definitely good for uh, a bit of fun. That much is for sure. Yeah. If you had to, uh, if you had to come up with an SCP, Tim, what what would it be? It's a tough one, that Jackie. Um, I think maybe something, something hospital based. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's always something about a story in a hospital where maybe an abandoned hospital. Just a bit eerie. Yeah, I think there's always something about that atmosphere. I think you redact a few things from there and your imagination starts filling in details of what's gone on. That's That can get serious. See, because the thing is, if I had to do one, I, mine would just be called The Red Dress. Because I remember now, Tim, I was working an event. I, I think it was, uh, I was doing an event for Red Bull, I believe. It was like a, a World of Warcraft event, right? And we've gone in through the lobby, walking through the lobby. And I remember distinctively looking at a woman that was wearing a red dress. And she was at the front desk, right? I thought nothing of it. Looked past the security guard, got into the lift, and I've gone to my room. And I've fallen asleep. Now, I've woke up in the middle of the night, Tim. Standing over me in a red dress was what appeared to be some kind of, of demon-esque woman just screaming in my face. And I, I panicked and bolted out of the bed, woke up, looked around. It's been 10 minutes. I've had a nap. And uh, obviously, was it a dream, Tim? That's was the it question. A dream? Well, that's the question. You've just got a, a, a well-pre-made SCP right there, haven't you, essentially? Your brain's written it for yourself. But, um, yeah, a bit of a scary one, that, Jack. I bet, I bet that's put you off red dresses. Yeah, well, that's else. the thing. I, I'm now terrified of hotels and red dresses and also 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared of 10-minute segments. I don't like sleeping for, for any shorter or longer than 10 minutes. I can only sleep in eight-minute intervals. That must be exhausting, Jackie. <laughs> it really is. It really is. But uh, anyway, welcome, I can everyone. imagine your alarm screen on your phone just oh, with eight-minute intervals, just like 78 eight-minute intervals. It's, it, genuinely, it's a nightmare. You know, you have to go through. The, the Alexa's going off every five minutes. It's bizarre. It, it really does throw you off. Well, every eight minutes, technically. It is an absolute nightmare. Uh, I think it's been about eight minutes since we started this segue. And hello, everyone that's joined us. If you're thinking we were watching some Siege, now there's some guy with a beard and a bald man talking about all sorts of madness. Don't worry. We, we do have some Siege-related content to get into. If you'd that's like to see do. some of it, Tim, we could probably give them a little tasty treat, of course. Cause we've still that's been working hard good. on the A to Z of Siege, haven't we? Them. Always working hard, Jackie. We're always working hard to bring that content. We want to make everybody welcome. We do indeed. If you're unfamiliar with it, take a look at this bad boy and get acquainted with the A to Z of Siege. M is for map pool. And when we talk about map pools, there are two different map pools that we really refer to. There is, of course, the competitive map pool, which is all seven maps that the teams have available to choose from. But more often than not, when we talk about a map pool, we're talking about a team's individual map pool. And when we do this, we're talking about the maps that that team likes to play. Generally speaking, teams will have maps that they will try and avoid, that they will ban out in most matchups. And Therefore, that map would not be included in what we would refer to as their map pool. So the better teams will generally have bigger map pools and be capable of playing on a larger variety of the active maps. There you go, the A to Z of Siege, one of the lovely little new additions that, of course, we've been trying to get added to the course of the show. So there's some nice content for that downtime and something that also gives a bit more of a level playing field across the entire community, Tim. Well, that's it. You know, quite often you'll get new people pop into the stream, I'm sure, and they look and they, they hear us going wild in the middle of a round and they think, 
what is he going on about? What is going on here? And so we always try to cover that off. We know that we've got loads of you watch tons and tons of Siege, and you know what's going on. But we also know that you want more and more people in the chat as well, and that you're all welcoming guys and girls. So we like to try and cater for those new people and just throw out a little bit of information. And if nothing else, you get some cool highlights. So win-win. Exactly. You still get to see some Siege gameplay, normally throwing in some of the better plays throughout the course of the time, of course. Tim's been hard at work, scouring through, getting all the uh, necessary clips for those bad boys, and it has paid off. And waiting has paid off as well. It looks like the game has just gone live, and we can head back into Clubhouse, the continuation of this series. Again, guys, sorry for the downtime, of course. We did have a little bit of a sound bug. We were getting that resolved. Seems like everything has been fixed. Just crossed him. Touch on wood. We are live. We are live, Jack. Cast the start game. <laughs> Please, Tim, start the game. Please. What are you doing? We're coming back in. We're in round five. So, unfortunately, we have missed the round along the way. I think the one um, that we crashed out of has been finished off. We can see that that win has gone to Furia. So, it remains very, very close. So, that's pretty good because it leaves us coming in at a level playing field. We've not sort of missed anything. We've not missed the team taking the lead there. We're almost coming in um, with a fresh start at that point. So, like we say, hopefully we'll stick with this right the way through now. Round five, we're going to be heading down to Church and Arsenal and so far nobody able to gather any momentum Santos have taken round one and three which is CCTV and Jim so they've taken the top floor sites each time and then uh, Furia have come in they've took round two which was in Church and Arsenal and round four which was in CCTV so their first upstairs win there in round number four now for the teams, we've said they could well be facing off in a relegation battle come the end of things here. So these uh, these games against each other are particularly important. They're going to want to deny as many points to the other team as they possibly can. And we can see we're getting set up now. We've got the Malusi on the board. Not something that we've seen too much of, Jackie, but this is one of the locations that Malusi has been brought along. Yeah, thrown into the mix. Obviously, out of the two of them, we've seen a lot more ace than Malusi. But as we've said previously, she definitely has her areas where she can excel. Uh, being such a nuisance maker, can slow you down massively, make it incredibly awkward to get into firefights, can be very versatile if used in the right locations. Whereas ace, just outright versatile. You can throw him into the mix pretty much on any map, in any position as a hard breacher, and he will pay dividends time and time again. Let's see, though, if we will get a little bit of the Malusi madness. Instead, we get Scardina, the headshot master, coming out with the opening frag onto Novice with a tasty little shot there, Tim. That was beautiful. It's been an absolute battle between these guys. We've had Scardini and Novice and Lender completely showing down with each other about who is going to pick up those opening kills. And this time it's Scardini that comes away with it. He's going to get that kill onto the Ash taken off the board there. So that is the entry gone by the wayside. And we can see this top floor Rome is having some good impact this time around. A minute and a half still on the clock and yet to even move Scardinia out of gym. So Furia, they certainly need to get moving here and they need to up the aggression. And Santos are playing this perfectly as Furia start to push into sight or onto the top floor rather. As they start to push through there, they just drop back a little bit further each time and soak up that pressure. Now, Highs will eventually shut down Scardinia, but look at the counter there. That is not the end of the world, losing the two Romers with only a minute left on the clock, especially when Cyprus is up there still making a nuisance of himself. We find ourselves now three versus two in favour of Furia, but the Santos defenders, they just need to lock out another 50 seconds here, and there is still a lot of work for Furia to do. They don't have any access to the site as of yet. A lot of groundwork, a lot of labour left in this round. If they want to be able to claw this one back and pick it up. 35 seconds remain. Three versus two. Wag and Rise as the last two remaining defenders into this round. We've got Bursa, Fred and Lender as the three musketeers. The triple threat that will be looking to threaten the livelihood of Santos. 
relatively soon. Bursa coming into play. Selma Device will rip the top off the hatch. He'll be able to push his way down, but is stalled. Held at bay by the smoke play of Rise. Dashing out the sanguine arsenic and then pulling out the shotty, waiting for close contact. Tim, they've got seven seconds to make this work. They have to do something soon. Impact's being cast out to slow them down. Wag going for the peak and he finds the first, slaying the initial man as bread gets broken in two and they can't do anything about it. Knocked off the diffuser, no chance for the round. Santos are left as losers. Great players from Santos there. As I said, losing three up on the top floor. You could initially have looked at that and thought, mm, that could be a big loss on the man count. But given that they were down to 50 seconds at that point with absolutely no access to site for Fury, it basically just took them too long. And that is, that's everything that that hold is about, Jackie. So we call it the SSG strat. Most people will be familiar with it or will have seen it before. You take the Mute and the Mozzie, you play them up on the top floor. In this case, with Cyprus on the Jaeger as well. They had three up there. Even even though it's a basement objective and you might look at that and say why exactly are they doing that but the reality is that they are burning time because those Romas cannot be ignored we've seen it and the reason that they can't be ignored is because a lot of mid-level control, so in and around bar and stock, kitchen, that ground floor level, a lot of control of that is required when assaulting onto Church and Arsenal. There's hatches that you want to play, there's angles that you want to hold vertically to allow you to get in and take that final execution onto site. So because you have to play in those areas, you can't ignore the top floor because as we see, cash floor... CCTV floor, bedroom floor, gym floor, all destructible. The floor at the bottom there in logistics, down into kitchen, destructible. So if you leave those Romas up on the top floor, they're just going to pick you apart. So you have to go in and clear them out. And that was played absolutely brilliantly by Santos there. Burnt two minutes, took two bodies with them, and Furia, they just had far too much to do and not enough time. Yeah, it's so hard to get back into a round like that at that point. Also, a lot of it comes down to the start of the round again for me, right? You look at the intro to that one, just getting your head ripped off on a man like Novice that's on screen now, that's going to hold you back so much. We need to see him finding impact frags, finding entry frags, and winning those opening duels. So far, he's not really had an opportunity to. Of course, if you're looking at the stats, it's not really going to give you the true story because we did have a rehost into this one. So it has, of course, removed what had already been built up. But Novice, he's not exactly had the uh, spectacular performance that he had back on play day one just yet. It is early doors. We're only coming up towards the last round of the first half. But that is the last round where he has an opportunity to be on the attack to pose a threat to him. And I'm worried. If he doesn't show up here, get the team a little bit of leeway, bring it back to potentially a free free split at the half, I think they haven't done themselves justice. Well, he needs that bit of confidence under his belt as well, doesn't he? You know, coming in there, as you say, to a defensive half where generally we see better performances on attack. You need a few kills there. You need to have some of those, some of those aggressive moments where you can feel like, right, I'm on top of things here going into that defensive phase because otherwise it could be a bit of a big ask, a bit of a, a tough showing on defence. And right now we can see some tight angles being held. We can see the double mirror strat has not been utilised this time around either. The Maverick it will be to try and clear this hard re Enforcement. So basically by cutting across top and bottom, they can get it to drop off the wall and then soft breach open um, what is left of the wall. Novice will open us up with things. As we said, he needed those kills before moving on to the defense. Gets the opener on to rise. And that could be big. We've just seen important players coming out of the smoke previously. It could be pivotal. I was hoping that the play from Mighty would be a pivotal attack as well, but the issue is that C4 relatively sticky with the double-sided tape. It gets stuck on the ceiling, and it won't reach him to new heights in the round. Instead, he peeks, going for a bit of a risky play to try and make up for it, gets slaughtered, and leaves his team in a far worse position. Now they're down to three operators left on Santos. 45 seconds on the clock, of course. Sephiria, you need to speed it up a little bit, but that is a speedy way to engage. Novice on the peak finds Wag bounding around, looking like Bambi as he gets shot in the back of the head. Cypress trading onto Fred, but as he peeks past the doorway, it will be his demise that he spots. Scardina from the stairs to straight into the brick wall, smashes his face as his jaw has been shattered by highs on the Maverick Tim. The last round going over to Furious. They do bring it back. They keep it close at the half and this one is wrapped up in a neat little package, three to three. 
Much more decisive round from Fury there, getting in, opening things up with a couple of early round kills. As you say, Mighty just unfortunate with that Nitro toss. I think if it doesn't stick to the wall and maybe nets him a kill or two, then we may be looking at a slightly different round. But Fury has certainly had that one on lock for the majority. They got the men circled, put pressure from all angles and made it very, very difficult for Santos to move around in any way, shape or form. So now that we've headed over the halfway mark, it's quite course a best of 12 maps so one team will defend consistently for six rounds and then switch and attack for six rounds so that is exactly what has happened and santos moves on to the attack now they're going to see exactly how they can crack the nut of these defensive sites how well they can get in get control and try to get that diffuser down and active on the ground okay an important round, of course, for either one of these two teams, as it was straight down the middle in our open half. Also, there's a bit more consistency, right, Tim, coming into this, because we did have the re-host. It definitely slowed down the game a bit. There was a good 10 minutes, basically, between the prior round till we got back in. So, in terms of you really be on, being on the ball and giving it, it might knock you for six a little bit. So, coming in here, now you've got a chance to find your footing, get a bit of stability built up, and play off the back of it. Is that going to favour Santos or Furia? Obviously, that yet to be seen with the course of this round. On the attack now, Santos, they showed us a better outing on the attack against Black Dragons than they did on the defence. They were more successful. The site that they're assaulting is Church and Arsenal, and that was their most difficult site against Black Dragons, winning one of only three attempts, so a 33% win rate for them. They're going to have to improve on that here, and they could really do with coming in and getting themselves a nice early start. We can see the top floor roam is in place, just as they had success with. We also have a vigil on the cards in the form of Fred and we said coming into this game how unpredictable Fred can be on the defence at the best of times so couple him up with that vigil and that is a nasty combination Wago the mighty Monty himself pushing further forward this could be a brilliant bait play if Fred's actually able to pull off something dastardly here they're focusing so heavily towards the right of course Mighty at least flicking back to watch towards the doorway but there isn't an assault coming towards him He's holding the angle, so it should be a free frag, which it will. Hook, line, and sinker. Fred walks out and gets busted in two. Bursa suffering the same fate as well, Tim. And this is not looking ideal for Furia whatsoever. Santos, you've got sight control. Wag can just sit there, crack open that diffuser, get it planted down on the floor, and you've got a major playing field to work with here. It's a free versus five hold your angles wag of course with a massive shield as well he can sit in front and defend cypress as the push comes out and they're still finding picks mighty with another one dashing his way through every one of the furia members it's just down to lender and novice and at this point they are starving themselves out no time no chance and soon no players Interesting players coming in from Ooh. Santos in the fact that they've just assaulted Sight extremely quickly and that is something that we have seen from Furia previously. We've got Novice fighting here, one versus three, time ticks down, he can't get the diffuser, so even picking up all three kills will be impactless at this point, unfortunately for him. Ultimately, shut down by Scardinia on the pistol, it will be a Santos win in round number seven and a good attack from them, which is what we would expect based on what we've seen previously. But as I was saying, Jackie, interesting because if you remember, Furia previously have played, I think it was on console particularly, played very quickly into Sight a few times, very objective focused, got in there and got that diffuser down. And it's something that it feels like they were just caught out with a little bit there. So for me, maybe need to be more aware of a play style that they've taken advantage of in the past. Yeah, I think so, right? You know, you, you, you've got to be aware. You have to be alert and ready for these sort of plays to come out. It's going to be an alert. What is the play here from Wag? The old bait move. Off of the ace, onto the ace with a six pick to try and bait them out. They make a change from Valkyrie going on to Goyo. Shouldn't affect things too much, of course, but just a little bit of mind games thrown into the mix, Tim. I love, a, I love the mind games of the six pick, especially when you see the sort of reactionary six picks as well. And of course, we've got the, the oversight to see exactly who is being switched from and to. But the teams are unaware of that. So they get to see that initial lineup of five. But then when the sixth pick comes in, it just gives the defensive team, a, or both teams rather, sorry, an opportunity to change just one of those operators without the other team knowing who they have changed to. That remains as a question mark unless they can spot 
spot them out on the drones during the preparation phase. Now, you can see a CCTV setup here, reasonably standard. We've got, interestingly, a couple of deployable shields. I think at least one of them is a go your shield, possibly both, out on the garage catwalk. So that's going to be interesting to see how that develops because the garage catwalk is a particularly important place to try and assault, try and gain control of. And we saw exactly why back in round number one here because Santos were able to completely shut down the Furia attack without that garage catwalk being lost. So that's something that Santos will need to deal with this time around on the flip side and those Goyo shields will make that a little trickier. Hi, Bruce. On the entry then, over on the ash. Curious to see how much of an impact he'll actually have into this round. We can see early on he was tearing down the barricades, talking of tearing down the walls. The walls of Jericho towards the front door of the site have been blown to bits immediately. It's just how strong Ace can be. You can launch those Selma devices on it and get it deleted in a matter of seconds. And talking of being deleted, that is unfortunate. Rise has dropped out. I feel like at this point we are going to be carrying on with the round, so it will be a four versus five going forward here. Obviously not ideal for Santos as they are in the lead. Worst case scenario here, if this gets brought back into a four versus four, we'll get him back in into the rehost following it and we'll see where they can go from there. The round is still live for now though, and they're looking to equalize. They spot out Kaid, do a little bit of damage, pepper spraying onto him as they're clearly peppered up for this round, Tim, bringing him down to fairly low HP. More than anything now, Santos need that opening kill. They need to level things up on the numbers here so that that dropout doesn't impact them too much. You can see why the deployable shield has just been played facing out towards the east wall there. It's just pro pro sorry, providing some safety to Lender on the Wamai so he can stay entrenched on that garage catwalk for as long as possible. We can see the utility is raining in at this point to try and dislodge him and cams and all the other defender gadgets are being taken out of the mix right now but not quickly enough as fred and lender pop up like evil jack in the boxes and get themselves two kills from the catwalk wag shuts down lender as a trade but that now leaves us in a four versus two and it is all to do for wag and scardinia here scardinia he has himself up there on the half roof he's just trying to pick anybody up will be peaked by the guy oh, and shut down by novice there Four on one now, and it is all to do for Wag. He's got himself one kill on the round so far. He's going to need to find another four. Unfortunate not to pick up the headshot on Fred, but surely it would have been too little too late anyway. The Jaeger it is ultimately to close the round down, shutting down the ace, and that will be another round going in the books for Furia to level things up once again. Now, obviously, just seeing... If they'll be able to get back in. Doesn't look like it. Seems like we are going for a re-host here, of course. So we can get him back into the lobby and then carry on with things. Don't worry, this one not looking like it should take as long as previously. Should be a fairly snappy one. And I'll turn my lights on relatively snappily there, Tip. That was smooth, wasn't it? Perfectly smooth. Um, about as smooth as me putting my glasses on previously, Jackie. Ooh. See, that's what we do, you know. <laughs> We, we keep ourselves on our toes. I, I we give know. you the behind the scenes. That's what we're doing. I mean, if you've not, you may not have come across it before if you've uh, not been in the LATAM streams too many times, but it's a little bit of a tidbit for you, Jackie. I don't wear Go my on. glasses when casting the game just whilst you I'm don't. on camera here because at such a short distance to my screen, I don't really need them necessarily. Um, and they give me a headache. So I don't wear them throughout casting. In like, you know, reference to i don't know why i did the hand motion for reference in reference to your monitor tim where are you when casting um i'm about an inch and a half away that's fairly close do you <laughs> so do... much so that i have to move my head to see other areas of the screen no i'm joking um i'm at arm's length away as uh, you know any good uh, health and safety advice would tell you to be i'm about two to three feet all right fair enough and where, where are you now similar then why the oh okay right purely because you're not looking at the monitor now i'm not particularly looking at the monitor right. i'm looking yeah, at the yeah, camera yeah. but also right, it's yeah. about the length of time as well so this generally is for five or ten minutes when we're doing the bits in between games but obviously the game i can be staring at the screen for maybe an hour um, yeah, because yeah, yeah. i don't really need them it just starts giving me a bit of a headache then so there you go there you go just for sure just for sure they're just glass in these jacket yeah, it's one of those with no lenses, just the plastic. Yeah. yeah. Throw you off party glasses. This is party trick. Look, I can see. And he takes them off. And I won't try and put my finger plate. through to prove it because I'll probably just poke my lens out or <laughs> something and cause a bit of an issue. If I tell you can probably see the reflection. If I, I do have glass in them. They are real glasses. 
Oh, mate. Right. Tim, it's looking like we're getting players back in fairly sharpish with this one. Doesn't seem like it should take too long. I have actually prepared you a little riddle, but we'll keep it for later on. Now, of course, if anyone's joining us and they're a bit confused about the riddles as well, you can get involved with those over it on It keeps the, going on uh, about riddles. riddles. Who is he? Why, why is there a sheet that says Ace's riddle answers? He just keeps going on about them. I don't know what he's on about with it. We have some riddles for the Rios. It's a lot of fun. It's a whole thing. It is, and we've been doing it for a while now. If, you, if you're unacquainted, get acquainted. We'll probably do one next time there's a rehost. As this doesn't seem like it should really take too long. We've nearly got all 10 players back in the lobby. So if you're like, damn, not another rehost, don't worry. It really shouldn't be that much longer. And then we'll get back into this because the game was actually starting to heat up a little bit as well, Tim. It seemed like they were really getting into groove of things. It's an unfortunate round to drop out on as well. Obviously, to lose a man in that manner, it does knock you for six a bit. But it seems like they're contending with it fairly well. We've got an absolute classic on the cards. There's no two ways about it. It's four all at the minute, and this one is going to 12 rounds. Absolutely guarantee it. We are not going to see one of these teams run away with this. It's going to go down to the wire, and it's going to be hard fought because they both know that ultimately they could be fighting for their lives and come the end of the season, if they find themselves in a relegation battle, it's matches like this that they could well be looking back to, wondering if they could have got more if the result doesn't go their way. So these two are coming out absolutely swinging at each other at the minute. And I am certain that that is going to continue. As you say, hopefully we can do that without any further issues that is just sort of halting the progress and just mixing up the momentum and just making it difficult for any team to really find a stride. That is unfortunate at the minute. But again, sometimes... As I've said, being a successful team is about who can deal with adversity, who can come into those scrappy situations and react better. If you come in and allow this to tilt you, at the end of the day, the other team's having to deal with exactly the same and you could well go away with fewer points because of it. Yeah, you've got to keep your mental fortitude strong the entire way through, right? It's the nature of online, obviously, Siege at this point. There is going to be issues. It's, it's unavoidable, Tim, unfortunately, until we get back into an environment where we can obviously monitor things a lot, easier, a lot easier when we are back on land, hopefully in the future. Obviously, for now, though, it, it is what it is. Obviously, contending with it is part of the game at this point in pro play. If you don't have the mental fortitude to be able to roll with the punches, get back in and try and keep off where you left off, you are going to drop off. We've definitely seen it plague some teams in the past back over the course of stage one there was a couple of moments where it seemed to knock teams momentum for this one it's been so back and forth already where it has looked very evenly matched which is kind of what we expected and the dropouts have been on either side it doesn't feel like it really favors or negates anyone no, I don't think so. Like you say, it's not like a team have got four rounds in a row and then they've been hit with a rehost and now they're having to sit there cooling down. And it's, it's not that sort of situation. Nobody's losing any momentum here. Yeah. You know, these rounds have gone back to back all the way through. There's no, nobody's won two rounds. Nobody has won two rounds in a row. It has been always Santos Furia, Santos Furia. So there's absolutely no momentum to. to broken here i mean by that pattern we're coming back into it for for all in round number nine you'd expect santos to win the next one if the pattern continues but at the minute they've not really shown us enough on their attack for us to really know exactly how it's going to go we've had one good round from them we've had one round where they struggled a little bit but they only struggled on probably the basis that they lost the man in the first minute of the round so we need to see them coming out at full strength we do, we do indeed. And luckily for me and you, Tim, it looks like we can jump off the struggle bus and start getting back to viewing a spectacular game of Siege. As I can see all 10 players now back in the lobby, so hopefully we should be kicking this one off relatively soon and continuing on here with Furia Santos. Now, coming into the game, it was overwhelmingly positively in support of Furia, right? We had 80% of the vote that thought Furia were going to take this. I wonder what they're thinking now, Tim, as we continue on with this with a scoreline going into it that does favour Santos. I'd be very interested to see, actually. Um, as you say, you know, how many people have jumped ship and have seen something from Santos now that actually has been a bit of a surprise to them. Maybe didn't manage to catch the Black Dragons game on Sunday, potentially. Haven't seen Santos, you know, any better than we saw them against Liquid. But that is certainly more of a comment, that game, on Liquid than it is Santos because Liquid can do that to any team on any given day. So, you know, to judge Santos by that first performance would be a very, very tough measure in my eyes. Like I say, the Black Dragons performance is much more what I would expect to see from Santos week to week. Protect your bombs from being by attackers. All right. Well, here we go then. 
We are live. We are back in the game. All looks glorious so far. So hopefully we can maintain this momentum. Obviously, scoreline wise, it's right down the middle, right? It's neck and neck. Basically, this has been the story for the entire game as well. As you said yourself, Tim, Santos will get around. Fury will bite back. Santos will bite back. They are at each other's throats 24 7. This is the one opportunity where you can start to step a little bit further ahead, get yourself a pivotal fifth round, and move slightly further forward. Then at that point, you're in crunch position as well. You win two rounds. You're six rounds deep. You've guaranteed a draw. There is no overtime in LATAM. If you're watching for the first time, we run best of twos with draws on either side. So, of course, if you can get yourself to six rounds, you are very close to, at worst, walking away with a draw in the series that's absolutely it and the way the points are awarded are across the the, the result for both maps essentially so it's not that you get points for map one and points for map two it's depending on what happens in both so two wins will get you three points a win and a draw will get you two points a win and a loss or two draws will get you one point and a draw and a loss or two losses will see you get zero zip nada for that game so it is very very important for these teams in the first map to try and get themselves that advantage because if you get the win in the first map you're guaranteed at least a point overall you know that you're putting something on the board and then if you can come away and keep yourself on top in that second map you can strive for that two that three points even if you can get the win on both but right now some very quick progress for santos here i'm not sure exactly um what fury have chosen i think they've negated the top floor roam they've not worried about that top floor this time around they're playing all five down on site that's going to allow santos to just get in very quickly and they have done so they've shown that they're using those drones good comms good teamwork just to call out and find all five of those defenders know that there's no threat upstairs and they can move in and start getting those hatches immediately one minute and 30 seconds remain on the round all 10 players vital signs are looking lovely everyone is alive and kicking and the storm needs to arrive soon. But which team is going to get loud? Who's going to bring the thunder and be able to get the entry frag into round nine? Only time will tell. Santos looking to make use of the vertical play here, Tim. Obviously, Buck with that skeleton key tearing apart the floorboards, ripping the drywall open, tearing down the plasterboard and giving himself a clear angle to peer in. And here's a clear-cut move coming round from Rise as well, baiting out the peak from Novice as he'll have to overextend to get the reconnaissance to see if he's fallen back. He'll link up with the rest of the team, and it seems like they're going for pretty much a full execution now onto the site. They need to hit their shots, and they need to be handy with their steel if they want to earn their keep into this round. We nearly had close contact there. I think it was Bred that went for the wide swing. Fred, rather. He didn't actually spot him out, Tim, and it seems like the instigation is now. Versus, few, versus Nitro out of hand, I believe. I think it was the one that we saw shot off that was stuck to the ceiling. Now, the challenge will come onto Blue Corridor. Bursa at close range with a shotgun will get one, but we have kills trading in both directions. 17 seconds to go, and this one is going to be a brawl in the final moments, but it's Santos coming out on top. They are delivering knockout punch one after another. They know the location of the last man. Bursa able to shut down an attempt on the plant, but will not matter as he's traded in immediately by the mighty man himself closes him down closes out the round and santos once again get themselves an advantage put themselves in the lead five four on the scoreboard there we go santos contending with a tempo that was broken of course they lost out on rise of the prior round he got back in and they kept on trucking and that is huge as well winning that fifth round does an awful lot for you you're now one round away from six where you will have a guaranteed draw in the books if you get yourself a seventh at that point you have done it and you can walk away with your heads held high with a lovely first map victory heading into villa which will be our second map in the series we won't get ahead of ourselves we'll keep it locked with this for now and we'll see at least if there is more fight in in Furia. For me, when I initially looked at it, Tim, I thought I would have favoured Furia, especially coming into Clubhouse. I thought if I had to put my money on them, they'd be able to show up here tonight and keep it close. The game is close, but they really have to grab this game with both hands soon or they risk losing out on this one. 
It's now or never. As you say, they need to make sure that they come in here and get themselves a result in round number 10. Otherwise, Santos will be guaranteed a draw. But I think also the momentum that that gains them could well push Furia dangerously close to the brink in terms of losing this one now. I like what I see from Furia on this defence, given that they were going in a turtle fashion. They show good sense to know that Dirt Tunnel may be a location for a push. And we saw the Maverick just opening up the wall very quietly and Rise just trying to sneak his way on in and it can be a great play there's a real potential for a backstab there whilst the defenders are completely unaware of it but cleverly they've got a Malusi Banshee out there in the dirt tunnel and they are paying it the full respect that it is due because that dirt tunnel let me tell you that has been the undoing of many good defenses here on the church and Arsenal site it's a pivotal one to try and pick up we shall see if Santos can win it, if they'll find success. A lot of spam coming out from Cyprus, it seems, the other side of the map, as we flip back to his POV. Obviously roaming in with support. A bit of a triple threat. There's three of them in close proximity, so if they do get overwhelmed, we're looking at at least a trade. Now, talking of trades, Rise very handy with his hands, as he will be getting to grips with that hatch and burning it to pieces with a blowtorch, of course. Dropping it off so they have that point of access down towards the site when they want it for the late round execution santos will they be changing the tempo so far it seems like they are sticking to their guns it's a slightly slower style of play where they'll open up those access points to really keep fury a guessing and then commit later on once you've got the vertical angles to try and find your entry frag i love the vertical angles here on clubhouse that you can get in and around bar they're really fascinating because quite often you find with vertical angles it's one room just directly above another and that's where you're playing in from but it's much more difficult to predict sometimes where the shots are coming from here you do have kitchen but then you look you move out into the corridor you can move all the way back into bar if you shoot out the soft wall that is in between bar and the corridor it again affords you a completely different angle down into arsenal and there is a huge variety of them now you can see the Jaeger of Lender. He's just absolutely locked solid into the blue corridor. He's got his ADS devices, and he is not going to peek this for love nor money, I wouldn't expect. He's just going to hold a tight angle onto the hatch there in case there's any potential for dropping a bit of utility down on top of him. He might just pick himself up a cheap kill there, but he's going to be very aware of the stairs. He doesn't want to expose himself to an angle there. And out comes the frag grenades there, just raining in. But again, Furia playing. Playing smart and not having anybody in the splash zone. But Cypress, he just walks right into sight and takes the head of Versa. Five versus four. Can he find himself a second? He's looking to blue. He knows there should be a man there. Fred gets the kill onto Mighty to level things up. Scardinia directly trades it and that finds us four versus three. But once again, just like the game, going backwards and forwards, kills to either team, both directions. We find ourselves three versus three. But Wag. Where are you on the Monty? Where are you? You need to push into sight here and think about getting this diffuser down. 13 seconds left to go. Two successful kills for Santos. Three versus one now. It's all down to highs. The diffuser is going down on the ground. The Monty, he's got the shield on his back. He's not going to be shut down before this is activated. There it goes. The first man that he sees will be his undoing. Cyprus shuts down highs from across the site. And that is going to be another round to Santos. Guaranteed draw and the advantage that they needed on clubhouse there we go santos starting to crack the whip as they're finally finding their form coming into the game now looking a lot more dominant you've guaranteed the draw that's done that's already put into the shopping bag and has been taken to the till tim but before they check out they second guess themselves they thought nah, you know what we don't just want the draw we want the win and they have a good opportunity to grab it but they have to keep their consistency. you got a bit of a buffer. You can afford to drop one round here or there, but that is it. Other than that, you need to really double down now, find a follow-up round and walk away with this one. Put it to bed now whilst you're on your attack. And Santos is definitely doable for them. Cyprus has been playing well. Fresh off the back of the rehost, he's coming in, toting four frags already. Mighty as well has been very effective at opening up those angles for them, Tim, and then backing it up with follow-up frags. He's not just good for the manual labor. He is good to do a brilliant Dexter impression as well. 
Waggett coming in on the Monty here for the top floor is an interesting choice and it's one that doesn't surprise me too much. Last time around, if you remember, we saw Garage Catwalk giving them some real trouble um, on the attack here. We had Lender playing up there on the Wamai. He's got Novish just deploying a Goyo shield for him there. He's also got a deployable shield that he will likely play on the Catwalk as well if it isn't already out there. He will put it and it just basically covers him from both directions. Now, there we go. Out goes the second deployable. Now, interesting early peak coming in here <laughs> big aggression coming out from fred there we've come to expect nothing less from him but he will be unsuccessful but if nothing else it just sends a message as to exactly how furia are playing this one they are backs to the wall and they know it and look at this how aggressive is fred being right up in the faces now i think a claymore has been put down outside of that garage door so fred he needs to just keep himself cool otherwise he's not going to be in this fight for much longer Look at the setup as well. The vertical repel on the rope. Looking to find any nook and cranny. A spot of skin, a little bit of how's your father where they can open up an angle and potentially get that early entry frag. It's the critical position to play from. But right now, they're not really getting much from it. They're waiting out until it does pay itself off. Cypress getting a bit aggressive as well. Charges into the breaching round. Opens up that softer wall. They've got players on cams. They've got a good read. They know exactly where they are and have a fairly tight inkling of what is going down into this round. Issue is, Whoa. I'll tell you who's going down. Cyprus from a substantial distance. A long shot from Novice. He is not a novice when it comes to punishing from a distance. Lender comes out and shows as well. He can step up when he needs to with the Org towards Garage. And this is getting rough now for Santos, Tim. The likelihood of them winning this one has dropped massively. They're going to have to give it to them raw. No trivia if they want to pick this up. Great start for Furia in the round five. Three is the advantage they currently stand at on the man count. And they are heading into the last one minute, 15 seconds. So things are going to be tough for Santos here. The next couple of kills are particularly important for them as a team because they have to go in their direction. If not, they're going to find themselves in an almost impossible situation. Right now, it looks like they're trying to mix things up a little bit and just trying to push from the construction and bedroom site instead. Now, we will see the door being opened. Scardinia taking huge shots there. But ultimately, Rise will be able to shut Novice down on the Goyo 3 versus 4. And that makes things just seem a little bit more possible for Santos here. But Lender, he doesn't help their situation one bit with a headshot onto Mighty. Rise, however, manages to walk into sight. We've seen him be able to win out in these difficult uh, distances advantage situations previously oh. what a move he goes to get onto the back of the Kaid but will be unable to secure the kill Bursa is simply downed he tries to move on and that is unfortunate I can see a different timeline there where Rise goes absolutely atomic for them but that wasn't the case and ultimately Furia they close out the round and send us all the way to 12 just as promised that's so rough. Yeah, I, I completely agree. The position he was in, that could have been a ginormous power play. He quite literally had barrels of impact frags tied to him. But they got cut off and they rolled away instead of their chance into the round. Really unlucky. Gets the down, of course. Tried to go for the flick around. That could have been a 2k. At that point, you're left in a huge scenario. A one versus two with another player that's down but not outstate. He runs the risk of trying to get him up. You swing, you kill him. You play off each other's contact, you kill him. It would have been easy pickings. Great hero play. Unfortunately, it just didn't come to true in the execution. Six to five now, Tim. And this is where it gets risky, right? That was your one mistake. That was your throwaway round. And that is gone. It has been thrown away. You cannot afford to make another mistake for Santos. Your only opportunity to win this opening map is to win it now and here. Coming in to the final round of the game. For Furia, a draw is on the cards. It's definitely a possibility. It's on the table. You just have to grab it and prove that you want it. They were hitting their shots since that prior round. There's a fighting chance. And this is going down to exactly what we said at the start, Tim. A level playing field between both of them. Furia and Santos, they look neck and neck when it comes to their skill ceiling right now. Heading back to Church and Arsenal then. This is an attacking site that we saw Santos struggle with. No, Furia struggle to defend, struggle to hold Santos at bay. 
And that is going to make it very difficult for them to close out a draw here because Furia, they've shown a good mastery. They managed to get in and get those kills. Now, we have got the mute on the board. We've also got what looks like an aggressive player coming out here from Fred on the Wama. He is desperate for one of them spawn peaks. And you can see that we've got Furia men all around the map. And that's not too much of a surprise because previously, the last two rounds that they've lost on this site, they have tried to go for the turtle hold. And it really hasn't worked out out for them they have lost them pretty easily to santos so they're trying to make a nuisance of themselves to, the, to them it's basically we might as well throw everything at this one and see what we can get because if we don't we lose it anyway so they really are coming out fighting hard fighting two for now into this one Ooh, novice it almost felt as if he was going to be screaming that Ryze has to hold on to his fillings in that encounter because he was ready to smash his jaw clean off. But he doesn't go for the overextension. Novice retreats back around and now the limelight gets flicked onto this man's Gardena. In the elevated angle, playing on top of the hatch. Novice suspect about it. Of course, he's got his ADSs down. He can afford to do something cheeky if he wants on the Jaeger. But pushing too far forward, it's not really going to work out in the manner he wants to. Doing a good job, at least, of wasting time is Fury right now. Tim, they're keeping back this oncoming monsoon of Santos stunners. But for how long can they keep them at bay? Now, very aware of the pressure coming in from the dirt tunnel there. Lender opens things up with one onto Mighty, but meanwhile, we also see Novice downed on the Jaeger. There will be no opportunity, I don't think, to pick him up because the pressure is mounting into sight. That is a bad throw on the nade there. If that goes into Moto, that is a potential free kill. Cypress, however, does manage to clean up Novice, Ooh. and Scardinia gets a great shot through the soft wall onto Lender there. That now leaves us in a four versus three, and the man count here just goes back and forward as Bursa gets himself a kill, but immediately traded once again we can see the Monty of Wag just providing a real nightmare for Heiz there as he's just pushing him around bullying him on the side and Heiz just dances left right centre trying to get anything he can but he'll get absolutely nothing as Scardinia comes in closes things out for Santos and that is going to be the map it went all the way to the wire but they were able to shut it down 7-5 they've done it in the end, they were able to find themselves victory in the dying moments of the game there on Clubhouse. They pick it up. Perfect play, being a bit of a nuisance maker with the shield. And I think that's the story of the game, Tim. All of the Monty plays we saw throughout this one were really, really lucrative. They did so much. We found two rounds that were guaranteed to Santos there just off the back of Major Monty rocking up. Absolutely. It was it was hard fought. 